Hello everyone and welcome back. Today's video is Mark 2 of the Chromatic Files subclass combo we have going on. You all enjoyed the last one I did, so today I'm bringing you the next one, and this one's going to be a throwback to a build we did back around April time. If you've ever wanted to know what would happen if you combine both Strand and Raveling and see your particles together, then I'm your man, as this setup can bite back. With how much damage is being built up over time, you can effectively use this to take out a large group of majors, ultras, and minor enemies much faster and without the need of secondary or heavy applied here. By using this setup, you can have a constant 17% kinetic damage buff towards your outbreak perfected, the ability to proc enhanced threading via weapons, be able to reduce enemies' output damage by 33% along with the element explosion, and non stop particle effects on screen that I'm sure will end badly just for everyone involved. It's also simple, but quite devastating on the right hand, so let me show you how to achieve this. To start, you're going to want to have the Wanderer where tangles that you throw a target will track, stick, and then explode to spend on them. Threading final blows creates tangles. You then want Mind Spun Invocation to enhance your grenades, which will be suspend grenades. Instead of heavily using threadings like last time, we're going to use it as a byproduct of our current setup here and there instead. Suspend is a very powerful tool for the Warlocks in terms of how it's used, and with our current setup, each target killed by an will also spread its effects onto others, and thus create a near infinite loop of suspend. This is where I see the use of the Wanderer being used, as it can also suspend for frame, and tangles are very reliable in most crowded situations. When looking at the fragments, we have Thread of Warding where picking up an overpower power grants more of a mail. Thread of Continuity where Suspend and Ravel and Cell effects have their duration increased. Thread of Generation which allows weapon damage to generate grenade energy. And Thread of Evolution allows Threading to travel further and deal additional damage. The Thread of Continuity and Generation are two fragments that are going to play a big part within the build and how it can function for longer. With Suspend as a grenade choice, once we consume it, all our weapons can then suspend on kills, with a much longer time duration thanks to continuity effects. This is where generation also comes in handy as kills will quickly build up our grenade ability energy, and by the time we are done, we then have a full grenade back. Warding in general is nice to have as the extra layer of defense will help us in most endgame content, while evolution is optional for a fragment, but if you plan to use any strong weapons with the following, then now is the perfect time to do so. For the mods and stats section, because of how the build uses chromatic fire and unraveling effects, we don't need to heavily rely on certain stats and abilities to achieve our goal, luckily. This means how you go about this section is a lot more freer than normal. For resilience, we have our tier 9 for that near max damage reduction in play. If you intend to use this in endgame content, then try and get the stat up to the following, or just get it to tier 7 and then add on the funnel endurance mod to cover the rest like shown. Discipline is at tier 7, and I haven't added the Font of Focus mod this time round because of how consistent Thread of Generation is. The Default and Fragment will cover our grenade cooldown rate, allow us to free up the stat for other mods or stats instead. If you want though, you can add on the following mod if you just want to use Suspended Grenades more often when Mind Spun Effects is available. The strength is at tier 7, but with Font of Vigar play, this will push it to tier 10 instead. Arcane Needle is a very powerful melee ability that can cause unravel effects without the need of us building up unnecessary fragments, etc. This one ability will be heavily used in the build, and thus it will be important that this stat is achieving our goals when using Outbreak. Now there is one fragment you can add to the build to help with the melee energy if you need it, and that is the Threat or Fury fragment, which would make a lot of sense to use. However, I only recommend you add this if you're not able to reach the stat like shown, or if you're struggling with picking and choosing your own fragment choices compared to mine. For armor charges, you're only going to need charged up to help provide the extra armor charges when needed. Next, having a heavy handed, connect siphon, shield break charge, and reaper mod will give you at least 4 ways of creating auto power through the entirety of the build. Powerful attraction will help massively here as well, as this will help with both healing and getting orbs for us when we can't move forward in most content. And then connect a weapon surge times 2 for the 17% damage boost, and the time dilation mod for the increased time based mod duration will fully hold up the build from there. You will then be left with some mod slots, so power preservation is great for the helmet and team support, while reserves and harmonic scavenger will allow us to use a heavy more often and make it slightly easier to run harder content. Now, lastly, the weapon being used will be outplay perfected as Pulse, 
which is a simple but great weapon to use in a lot of content. Extremely reliable while ad clearing and boss DPS, and also pretty good to use in PvP if you want something really smooth to use. The reason why the weapon is being used here today is so that when we apply Unraveling on the targets, we can also apply Seaver to targets as well if it's based on precision hits. With the nanite damage from a Kruger hit being procced, and Unraveling also being procced, the two in hand can create an absolute landmine that is hard for users to avoid. Now, with Chromatic Fire applied, you can enhance this further by reducing the outgoing damage via Sever and apply an elemental explosion while you're at it. Afterwards, I would then advise you to get the Korax Distress Grenade Launcher with hatching an Envious Assassin if possible. This weapon has some great perks on offer, with one combo being Chain Reaction and Hatcheting, that can see being extremely chaotic and perfect for this sort of build. The damage is ideal against bosses as you can mag dump bosses or you can mag dump large groups of enemies that are in your way efficiently. Plus, with hatching applied and active, we can get a nice extra boost of damage when properly applied. Now, we have covered this build back around April time, but instead of chromatic fire being used, we use swarmers for a more consistent strand outbreak setup. The build is still as viable as you last remembered it, but this time with chromatic fire applied, we can add on even more bang to our build and buck. Applying what we already know and used, the stacking of damage via Seaver Particles and Strand Unraveling effects will cause a swarm of constant damage onto a single or group of targets that will attack whoever until they are dead. This is quite amazing as you can keep applying this damage over and over again and prevent large groups of enemies from swarming you. It's like an anti-swarm build, but you're using reverse tactics on them. However, with the lack of swarmers now, Chromatic Fire will be applying both an explosive finish on critical hit kills and will also sever targets, which is around a 33% reduced damage. This may not seem like a lot to most people, but considering the point where the build is to swarm target and let the additional damage build up over time, this is actually nuts on the grand scheme of things. This can make taking on mini bosses even more of a breeze, but rather its application can now be used and felt once you hit most endgame content. If something like this would be suitable in most endgame content such as Master, GMs, Raids and any sort of difficulty in mind. However, the build is limited on GMs that require specific anti-champion weapons that you may not have on hand. You also got to remember, its biggest weakness is mobile and aggressive targets that aren't heavily affected by attacks such as Tormentors or the Melee Knights. We are using Suspend Grenade which can trivialize most of the content, but you have to be fast and consistent when using the following in the pinch. I personally think the build overall does what it needs to do pretty well, in fact excellently well. And just like our last version, this version allows us a greater opportunity to shut down groups of mini bosses in a more shorter time frame. Match game and mobile combatants may prevent the build from being successful in most content, but as long as you trigger their effect from one target, these become less of a hassle and more of a nightmare for them. But what do you think? So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts on content shared then please leave a comment below or at the same time if you enjoy the content or want more of these videos in the future then leave a like and sub out here. I will leave a dim link for the build below and if you want more stuff like this then I have a playlist available covering all types of builds you desire. It was great sharing today's video with you all, I hope to see you again soon.